Hello and welcome back to Humanizer, which is a free and open source 3D character creator for Go.4. It's based on the Make Human project and MPFB2 Blender plugin, which are also free and open source. As you may know, I've been working with Matt Seaton for the last couple months, converting this project into an official Godot plugin. So you can just drag it into the add-ons folder of your game and enable the plugin in the project settings like so. Then you'll be able to access the humanizer node from anywhere in the project to create characters for your game. Before we get started, I'm very excited to announce that we've launched the Emberlight Game Studios so we can develop indie games and release them on Steam and other platforms in the future. And I'm really looking forward to all the projects we have in store. But for now, Humanizer is our top priority, getting the remaining features and bug fixes as needed. We also created a channel for the Ember Light Studio, and Matt has already made a couple of videos documenting the plugin configuration and all of the features in the toolbar here. So I'm not going to cover all that again. I'll just do a quick demo here, and I will put links in the description to those videos. So I strongly urge you to go watch that if you need more information. So we've got all of the basic functionality from the Make Human program. Under the shape keys, you can change the character's age from a baby all the way to elderly, and you can adjust the height, muscle, proportions, and weight as well as the race category, so you can see how it changes. And then there's an extensive list of detail shape cues. So some of these are self-explanatory, but you'll just need to adjust them to see what they all do. And there is a randomize button, which is kind of fun. So you can play around with that. So now, if you set the gender down to zero instead of one, the character will be female. And under the clothes, we can give her a shirt and skinny jeans. Can equip a fedora as well. And to resolve the skin clipping, you'll want to remove the occluded vertices before exporting. And then we have the left and right eye, eyebrow, eyelashes, teeth, tongue, and hair as well. So we can change the hair. So we still need to fix some of the clipping issues, but, and you can give her eyelashes, so as you can see, it's extremely customizable, and so these are just the base assets from the Make Human library, but you can download any asset and run the import assets from the toolbar. So Matt will make a video giving all of the details for 
importing additional assets for your project, so be on the lookout for that. And you can also change the selected skin texture from the default assets if you want, as well as the overlay color for the skin, hair, and eyes in case you want like green skin or blue skin elves or something. And it has a capsule collider for just navigation. And we're working on the ragdoll hitboxes. So, and the cool thing about this is you can actually run this scene now with your character created, the local scene, and you can load your character in game, although it does have some issues still that we're working out. Additionally, the skeleton we're using is the game engine retargeted, although there are other options and you can still use Mixamo animations with this, although there is a process which I believe Matt will make a video about in the future for importing Mixamo animations to your retargeted rig. So as you can see, this is the idle animation and there's also a run animation included in the player which is also from Mixamo. So you can see that looks pretty good. And finally, there is a bake function, which compresses all of these nodes into a opaque and transparent mesh. And if I go to save this. It will create a data folder in the file structure and this will include the new scene for the character. So it has the skeleton and animation and baked mesh with all of the materials merged into the two surfaces. So this does not have all of the humanizer functionality. This is just a normal character body 3D with some movement controls. And this will be much lighter to actually have in your game. So if you needed to edit this character further, you would then have to load it back to a humanizer node and re-export. But this is far more efficient in game. So that's pretty much all of the functionality. We did make a Patreon for Emberlight if you were interested in supporting the project, but if not, it'll be free and open source either way. So thank you for watching and have a great day.